In the last video, we went over how we could use Houdini properties inside of Clarice. So let's take this one step further and show how we can export assets from Clarice, use them inside of Houdini, and then bring them back inside of Clarice to do certain things. So for this specific task, we're going to create a bunch of points on top of this terrain that I just made inside of Houdini. It's literally just a height field with the basic noise just dropped down and then exported. Um, nothing special, literally just all I did was that. And then we're going to create a bunch of points on top of this. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do a point cloud. And then we want to set our geometry as the height field. And then that should be all we need to do. Let's go ahead and set the point count to something like 10,000. And that should be good. So now we have a bunch of points and we need to export those to bring them into Houdini so that we can use them. So let's go ahead and right click our point cloud here and let's go contextualize. And now we have a context with our point points in it. So let's go up to file and we'll do export and we'll do export context as Alembic. So let's set our file path. So we'll just go in here and we'll call this, uh, let's just do PC export.abc and we'll save that. And now let's jump inside Houdini. We can just do this inside here. So let's do file and let's navigate to our point cloud and let's go ahead, set our display display flag here. Again, get it to work. There we go. Oops. And we'll zoom in a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit D and let's go to our background and we'll set this to a dark background just so that we can see things a little bit easier. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be using a attribute inside of uh, Houdini that we create in here to control the scattering inside of Clarice. So let's say that we want to create um, or just want to have a certain type of trees on the tops of these terrains, or maybe we want to use rocks up here. And then maybe in the valleys, we want to have just grass and in between, we want to have trees. We can do that super simply inside of Houdini here. You can just work back and forth between the two uh, using this, this reload geometry. And then obviously in Clarice, you can just hit control shift and R and it'll reload your resources once we export out our point cloud again. So first of all, let's go ahead and look at our geometry spreadsheet. You're going to see that we just have one position here. That's because all of our points are packed. So we need to unpack them. So we'll just right click and unpack and we'll wire that up. And now if I take a look at this, see we have a bunch of points here now and we have this ID attribute. Let's go ahead and delete that because we're going to be uh, basically remaking another uh, ID attribute and we don't want to have that one confusing us once we get back into Clarice. So attribute delete and then we'll go to point attributes and we'll just delete that ID. So now we just have a bunch of points uh, with their positions. So we need to drop in, we're going to use a color node here to control our, our scattering basically or our IDs basically. So right away you can see that we have some colors assigned so we need to change this from constant to ramp from attribute. And before that, we need to actually convert our position because we want to use the height of our, our points here to determine where we're going to um, be applying this ramp. So let's do an attribute wrangle, drop that in, wire that up. And we want to just go ahead and go uh, I for an integer, or actually F because we want to create a float because this value is a float and then at, and we'll type height. So that's going to be the name of our float value. So this at sign is going to make sure that the, the attribute actually uh, is created and then it carries on into your next node without that. And like if you were to just do a float height and we'll just I can spell set that equal to one. You see that if I move on to the attribute wrangle, uh, it doesn't 
uh, carry through. So if we go f and then at height equals one, you can see that it carries through. But we don't want to just set this to one, we want to set this to the y position of our points. So we'll do at p to access the position, and then we'll do dot y to access the y position of our points. So now we have our height value as our y, and we'll do we'll go back to this color node here, and we'll just set this to our height. And now we want to make sure that we're mapping the range correctly. So let's go ahead and just take a look at what our max value is. So 83 is our max value and negative 62 is our min. So just for simplicity's sake, let's make, make this negative 100 to 100. And now if I go back to our scene view here, you can see that if I go ahead and change these values. So we wanna twirl this down and set this to a, where is it at, a constant. Now, if I adjust this, you can see that we have the full range of our, our points here, and we can control them, basically the scattering of them. It's hard to see, but if I go ahead and set this back to the light view, you can see the black points are actually still there. They're just black, uh, so they don't really show up very well in the dark, but that's okay. So now we have basically the setup for our ID mapping. So we're going to use this ramp to control where our points are going to be showing up. So let's go ahead and just for uh, visualization sake, we'll set this to uh, something like that. We'll just do the tops of our terrain as uh, one value. And then let's go ahead and create another value here. Let's just set this to something like red so that we can see it a little bit easier. And we'll just drag this around to get some uh, breakup of our, our points here. So now we have, let's actually drag this down just a little bit more. Now we have a decent amount of points that are black. And we can set this to a different color so you can see it a little bit better for now. So we have a decent amount of points that are just black and then we have, or, or yellow in this case, and then we have some that are red and then some that are white. So Basically, any points here are going to be set to one value, so we can use this in our scatter. The red is gonna be another one, and then the white is gonna be a third ID. So you can set these to, uh, or create as many of these as you want to kind of control your scattering. But we wanna actually change these. So we're gonna set this back to black, because that's gonna be our ID value of zero. We're gonna set this to black, and then we're just gonna change this to one because this is gonna be our ID value of one. And then our third point here, we're gonna just set this to two because that's going to be our third value, which is two. If I look back at our, our colors here, you can see that I've got some that are two. And if I scroll down, I've got some that are one and obviously I've got some that are zero. So that's what we're looking for. So we need to convert this to an ID now. So we'll do an attribute wrangle We'll wire that up. And then we want to create our ID attribute. So we'll do I for an integer because an ID is going to be an integer. And then at ID is equal to, and then we need to convert the red channel or any of the, the channels that you wanna use. You could do the green or the blue channel, it doesn't matter because um, they're all the same value. So we'll do the red channel for this. So we'll do, we'll convert this to an integer. So we'll do int and then at to uh, get the color. So at C, D, dot R to get just the red channel. And then now that's going to convert that to an integer. And you can see that we have some values that are two, some that are one. And if I scroll all the way down, we have some that are zero. So now we've set up our ID. And if I wanted to, we can actually go back to this color and let's go something in here and we can set this to a third value if we want. You can see that now I have some threes in there as well. I don't want those, so I'm just going to drag that off and we'll leave it like this. Now, I don't want all of these attributes once I bring that into Clarice, so let's just delete those out of there. We just want the ID. So let's go, uh, pos actually the position, maybe we'll leave. 
go ahead and get rid of the height and the color information. And now we're left with just our points and their ID attribute. So let's set a null here. And then let's call this uh, point cloud uh, ID mapped. mapped. There we go. And then let's do a, a Lembeck output. And then we can set our display flag here. And we'll just set our, our export. So let's do um, ID, let's do PC ID mapped dot ABC. And we'll save that to disk. So now let's go back to Clarice. And we'll just hide that point cloud for now, if I can, or disable it. There we go, we'll just disable it. And let's go ahead and bring it back our point cloud. So let's do reference file and then our ID mapped uh, point cloud. So now the points are lining up perfectly with our terrain here because we didn't affect their position at all, but we have uh, attributes assigned to them now. So just let's go ahead and create some geometry. So let's just do a square, a sphere, and a cylinder just for the sake of the video. And whoops. Let's go ahead and create our scatter here as well. And let's go to geometry support and we'll do our ID mapped point cloud. We'll set the scatter input mode from random to ID. Let's go ahead and bring in our geometries. And they're not gonna do anything right away. So if I set one of these, let's set the second one to one and the third one to two. If I zoom in real close here, you can see that we have some of these showing up now. Let's go ahead and set our scale up. Where is that at? Our scale, there we go. Let's set this to like 10 and 10 and 10, just to make it a little bit easier to see. So right away, you notice that we don't have uh, all of our, um, our objects in here. They're just spheres, and that's because we need to go into our material graph. And, oops, it's the wrong one. And we need to extract that property. So let's do extract property, and we'll set this to our ID, and let's just do our scatter input. And now you can see that this has worked perfectly. So at the tops of our trains, we have our, if I go back to our scatter, at the top of our train, we have our uh, cylinders, which we set to the ID value of two, which matches up with what we set in Houdini. If I go back here, you can see, if I go back to our color node, that this last value, uh, like I said, we set to two, middle value we set to one, and obviously at the bottom of our train, we set that to zero. So in the middles, we have this sphere, which we set to one, and then we also set the bottom to zero. So we have those, uh, those squares, or those cubes, I mean, uh, showing up on the bottom of our train where we have those set. Now, like I said, uh, if you wanna do more complex stuff with like this, you could, set, um, you could set this to like the grass at the bottom, um, or if you wanna set the probability, you can have multiple trees in each ID. So let's say, we wanna set this to uh, one as well. We just won't have anything on the tops of our train for right now. And you can see that, actually, let's set this to zero. There's a, there's a few more of those going on than there are the spheres. You can see now at the bottom of our train, we have some cylinders as well as some cubes showing up. So if we wanna change that probability, we can set this down to maybe 10%. Now you can see that there's a lot less of those going on. So you could have a bunch of grass with maybe some bushes going on, or if you wanted to vary the, the trees that you got going on there, you can do that in the middle of your trains, stuff like that. So that's a basic introduction of how we can basically just transfer attributes uh, from Houdini to Clarice, uh, but also transfer the, um, the files from Clarice to Houdini first. Uh, super, super easy to work with uh, workflow. And if I wanna do, let's say, if I wanted to, we could change up the point cloud as well. Let's just disable that for now and we'll un 
do that. Let's go to our point cloud here. And maybe let's change this to, maybe we only want 5,000 points, right? So let's go back to here and we'll select that and we'll just go to export context as Alembic. Now we can just click okay again. Oh, cause that's not gonna, it's gonna wanna try to overwrite our thing. So let's just do export one. And then we can go back to uh, our Houdini and we can come over to our file and let's do export one, reload the geometry. And then we can come back to our Alembic here, save that to disk. And then I can disable this. And if I undo our, our scatterer, let's actually let's undo that. And let's go to control shift R, reload that resource. And I can see that we have a lot less points going on and our scatterer has updated accordingly. So it's a full procedural workflow. You just gotta, I guess, change a little file naming and it should work just fine. But super uh, flexible workflow to, to do that. Um, a lot of fun to transfer stuff between Houdini and Clarice. Uh, Clarice is super powerful, uh, but Houdini as well is, is very powerful and very easy to control things uh, inside of, of Houdini. And do some different things with that. You can also control the rotation and stuff. So you could do all of that if you wanted to inside of, of Houdini. So anyways, hopefully this helped you out. I'll give you a little introduction of how you can do some different things um, and, and transfer stuff from Clarice to Houdini and then back again if you didn't know how to do that. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel uh, that go into how to do different things inside of Clarice, as well as a bunch of stuff on Houdini and uh, some stuff on Cinema 40 and Redshift as well. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you guys check that out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.